What's up? It's your girl, Father Long Legs. You know me, Daddy T. This is You Can Tell Me Anything, the podcast where comedians confess something they want to get off their chest. I'm very excited for my guest today. He is the host of Faded Comedy, or creator, one of the co-creators of Faded Comedy, and so, since spread all over the country, um, because there's a Faded Comedy LA, and they host uh, Twitch live streams, and they did a cocktail hour, which I had a lot of fun and got way too trash doing. It's Mike Malloy. What's up? Hey, how are we doing? Doing. good how are you is faded like an empire now uh it has splintered off into different cities by just because the people who i started it with moved home gotcha okay yes yeah. so it's Corey moved back to to denver sean jordan moved back to portland and uh we figured we might as well plant a flag in each city i love that though it's like organic um before we get too far i like to ask my guests for a good confession just so the audience can get to know you um it's, it's just like a humble brag or something positive just anything that's like good like not shitting on anything when, when is this uh, releasing because i haven't put pen to paper on something good that just happened but it probably should be oh it'll be so the the new season comes back uh in two weeks so i think this will probably be like the third episode so mid-february late february is that right. well i'm supposed to be taping something for comedy central in march ah oh my god that's amazing yeah. congratulations huge okay. that will time up really well two weeks or I gotta take well, <laughs> no manifest that but it's almost like we're enforcing the reality that it's happening by like living yeah on this path um congratulations that's huge um well this pod uh i don't know how much you know about but i know we know each other as comedians um but we i sort of started this because um i started going to therapy later in life and realized like the combination of like doing stand-up on stage was cathartic but you know there's a lot of um you have to put things in specific formats and punchlines um and i realized like i just really enjoy (laughs) getting things off my chest and talking whether it's in punchline form or in therapy. So I like to ask my guests sort of like, what's your conf, like, do you have a confidant? What's your sort of routine when you have um, things you want to talk through? Like, do you go to therapy um, or is it with your partner or like, you know, best friend, that sort of thing? What, what's your routine? I did have a therapist before the pandemic uh, started and then she retired. So that was that kind of threw me for a loop to have her retire like two weeks before a pandemic and then just be like, well, fuck this for a while. I oh, man. To... Yeah. So I've been raw dog in life. <laughs> and... Raw dog in life. Oh, my God. I don't think I've ever heard it put that way. Uh, yeah, yeah, I could. I could probably use some of that therapy lately, but yeah, no, it's just been, you know, uh, burdening my fiance and my friends. <laughs> But that's a like I, that that metaphor. Uh, sorry, I'm like stuck on that because I just realized there's so many layers of like that you're not using protection, which is like mental health protection. I just like really like that. Um, that hits all the things I like, which is really stupid sex puns, and therapy and mental health. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I mean, everyone's in a different place. Like I actually don't go as much as I did when I first started because now it's all over zoom and I tend to like focus on specific things, but I do realize like when it goes too long and I don't have comedy or anything, I do start getting listless, but, um, yeah, there's no, like, I feel like whenever I ask this question, people are like, oh, I should be going more, but there's no, <laughs> there's no wrong or right way to do it. Yeah. And Yeah. All right, let's take a quick break, Mike. Okay, when we get back, I want to hear all about your juicy confession. And we're back, Mike. The time has come. I'm sure you, you're you holding this tight to your chest, but it's time to let me know. Is there anything you want to tell me? Yeah, uh, I don't watch much stand-up for a stand-up. I, uh, Ooh. I don't enjoy watching it. You don't enjoy, okay. You don't, not only don't watch it much, but you don't enjoy watching it. Are we talking TV or like live shows? Like, do you kind of just hate all uh, of it? <laughs> just, I mean, just like specials. And okay. Stuff. I don't really watch. I, I love live comedy. I, I think it's it's uh, a very different thing than watching it on TV. Yeah. I hate sitting in an audience though for 
for stand up, I like that makes me wildly uncomfortable. I want to either hang in the back or hang. <laughs> I mean, that's classic stand up feeling about it, though, because I, I think in the first couple of years, I was still kind of a fan in the sense that I was like doing stand up and wanted to go to shows. And I start that's when I started feeling weird sitting in shows. But if I go with a friend who's not a stand up and you see a friend like that's yeah. that's like more like a weird social uh, dynamic. That's strange. Yeah. That's even tough for me. Like that's, you know, when I have friends that are like performing at theaters or like taping a special, <laughs> I'll come to this. I'd be, I'm just like, oh, you're lucky you're my friend because otherwise I would. Huh. Okay. I want to dig into this more. Well, I don't know if you already know the answer to this, but if not, we can definitely dissect it. But is there a specific reason why? Oh, I mean, it's probably, I don't know. It's, it's probably just anxiousness. Like, <laughs> if I'm sitting there watching that, I'm kind of like. Do you compare yourself in career wise? Really compare myself, but like, I'm like, I wish I was up on stage right mm. now. Like I, it's like going to a sporting event that you're just like, you're recently removed from <laughs> played it. Like if I was to go to like, if, if I was to go to a high school football game, my freshman year at college, I'd be sitting there being like, fucking i want to be playing right now this damn stuff. i was just gonna ask the sports um question because i know you used to play as well but i i, I was surprised that's where you went with it because in my i mean i guess i'm not as athletic or ever was going to play in college or anything but i have um i would think that it's also enjoyable to watch as long as it's not like the playoff game you missed but that's really interesting like did you have um dreams to go pro in high school not in football, no. But or just any, like, before I, okay. Before I rip my arm. So it was, so there's an element where, like, you really saw that sort of, like, far away long goal. And then so anything that reminds you of almost, like, this is a path I could have taken maybe yeah, puts you in that. It's more so just that I always enjoyed the participating in it more than I enjoyed the watching it. Or especially at that level. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, I don't, I'm not trying to watch fucking high school football games. <laughs> Do you did you watch stand up growing up? Uh, like, was there a moment it went from you feeling different about it, or um, were you always just like, did you come into comedy through a back door and then like never really got into watching specials? I watched a lot of um, like my growing up Comedy Central wasn't in our area for some reason. Like, we didn't get mm -hmm. it in, in our air, like on our cable package until like late two or late nineties maybe. So I grew up more watching like Comic View on BET. That was mm -hmm. like Deaf Comedy Jam, shit like that. Um, so I had a, a very different <laughs> uh, perspective of comedy than I think most of uh, the the white people. <laughs> the white people, but you see, but you you watched like as an audience, right? Or were you always from that 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 early age, like feeling like this is something I'm I have a calling to do, like I want to perform. Uh, I always like growing up, I was always like a big Conan guy. So that was always like what I had wanted to do. And I really didn't think of stand up as like a fucking option. I just like, I had no idea how you got into stand up. I didn't mm -hmm. really watch a whole lot. I didn't, I, you know, I wasn't one of those kids that like grew up on, on certain stand ups. I really liked like Norm Macdonald was like one mm. of my favorite comedians. Um, Martin Lawrence. Uh, yeah. I think that's not that unusual unless your parents are really into stand-up especially um like definitely like immigrant parents like mine like I wasn't even aware of it like consciously as a I mean I think I generally understood if you asked me like do you, have you heard of stand-up comedy yeah. but the whole idea that you could go to a club and watch it I wasn't aware till I got to college um I guess my I guess what I'm trying to get at more is like there was that moment that you enjoyed it like as a passive audio like you know genuinely like watching it and like this is cool this journey you're taking me on and then and then it switched or it was a little le like you never genuinely like connected to watching it as much as you did to performing so i, I in college there was like a stand-up contest and i entered it having never done stand-up and did pretty well and then like let it sit for a couple of years i was like working in in fucking tech and this girl that I was dating at the time took me to, it was, she was from Maine. And there's this comedian named Bob Marley, who everybody in Maine is absolutely. <laughs> His name is Bob Marley. That's funny. Yeah. And I went 
and saw it and was just for an hour just gritting my teeth. <laughs> I could fucking do this. Like I could. Like, huh. I don't even remember what he said. I don't even remember if it was that if it was as bad as in my mind it was. But I was just sitting there and just being like, I could fucking do this better. And uh, so I kind of got in a stand up out of spite, I guess. Wow. That is like such an like a like a jock athlete bully thing to say. <laughs> but it's so funny that it did work out because you are a stand up. And I've never heard of I mean, I've heard of the Bob Marley, the, the other Bob Marley, but not Bob yeah. Marley, this comedian from Maine. Um, so clearly you're not wrong about that. I mean, I have no idea that they're good or not. So, I mean, I'm not trying to shit on them, but they're not on this pod. Um, that's so funny though, because that, I mean, I'm sure you've heard that sort of trope of like doing comedy on stage and having the guy with the girl on a date and the guy's like trying to heckle or be funny because he's like, have you, you, have you heard this trope before of like, yeah, when... yeah, but I'm I'm not trying. I was never trying to do like <laughs> I'm not to interrupt anybody's good time. But I was sitting like you know I was, right. But you felt that like Alf, like something within you was lit up. Yeah, I'm a competitive person by nature, and when I see somebody doing something that I think I could do better, <laughs> you know, it, it brings out the worst in me. But... Damn. Uh, I mean, that's like a lot of maybe I should be using spite to fuel my career because that's taken you very far. I, I feel like my, not, not my not anger and not. spite always putters out like I'm like, all right, I'll do one thing and then that's it. Um, but you do love stand up now. I mean, I guess yeah. I, I'm so interested in this division because and it's not unusual. I'm just like trying to break it down more. And maybe there's not that much here and we can move on. But I am I just kind of want to because to me like I do have this moment where I went from being able to enjoy totally like with awe and like you know excitement and naivete of of anything like movies and tv and now I watch things it always feels kind of like homework I do still enjoy specials but it is very different and um, sometimes it does feel like more laborious Um, so I wonder if there was like for you if there was ever like the before because I'm not sure if you like really it's, it sounds like you never really connected that much to watching it but um well, performing I, is what you get out of it like, I like going out and seeing stand-up if mm-hmm. stand-ups coming through town that I wanted to see or that I heard were good I'd go see them live because even a, a mm. television product doesn't really give me a, a great idea if that person yeah isn't that so wild that so much of our world is spent trying to get that late night spot, get that special so that we can be on a TV in front of audiences that barely understand the art form at all. Like, I didn't even realize until you put it that way. That are are in town from fucking the Midwest that... Yeah, because most of the best... I mean, I obviously still would like to do all those things, but I think you're right. Like, there's something... Especially you, you started in Boston, which has a really, really fun live scene as well and there's something about the live comedy scene that if you've never if you're not in a big city or never been around it um you might only ever think of stand-ups like oh they do their big special and that's it and so much of like starting as a performer is not that at all and what's so fun is the like community and the ambiance and being in the room and it's like that so much of that gets lost and i think so much of uh the process is not understood by the average person like there's mm-hmm. times where somebody asks me if i like made that all up on the spot and I'm just like, oh my god did i make that look this fucking easy like <laughs> it's frivolous like i'm i'm clearly i prepared something i had a lift drive this was like a week ago and i was like trying not to be too combative because i was like whatever but i was because i was with my boyfriend i didn't want to embarrass him but the guy was like we had just come from a place too where where at dinner like the table next to us there was like an older man on a date trying to I feel like he was trying to impress his date by dropping like that he goes to the comedy store but he wasn't a comic like the way he was talking was like yeah. it felt like he was like I know comedy and that makes me cool and I was just like gritting my teeth to not say anything but then on the dr- ride home um this driver started um he said something similar he, he was talking about going to see a show at um the store and then i th- i think he saw like was it john totoro he saw like someone who's been around for a long time and he's like oh he's so funny and then my boyfriend was like oh what were some of the because he's like this is the funniest set i've ever seen he's like what were some of the jokes and he was like all i, I don't know they were just street jokes that made me like r- realize that most people want to hear 
just the mo they want to be in the moment where they feel like it's yeah. funny but it's like if when i think of funny jokes that i've heard from like you know like our, our friends our peers like I remember them for years and I, he is obviously, you know, if you're doing well and successful and you've been in movies, you are funny, but it's just funny to hear someone say like, Oh, street jokes, you know, like your funny uncle. And that was the moment I realized like people don't want you to try hard. Well that, but also like they want you to sound like your funny uncle, but your funny uncle is funny because he watches specials and quotes them. Like somebody wrote that shit, you know, like nobody just, even if you went on stage and riff, like, after a decade of having a career like that <laughs> decade actually made you funnier like you didn't just yeah. you weren't born and riffed <laughs> well I, I think obviously the the that social media has obviously changed the way that people consume what's funny and if anything has been proven it's that people don't care about originality <laughs> or like who the original huh. came up with like look at something like fuck jerry where you just uh. oh like a billion people follow this and they don't care that those people steal everything. They don't care who the original person was. They're just like, all right, give me this fucking bite-sized version so I can have my little fucking laugh and I can move on. I don't care who the first, you know. I don't wow, yeah. Creating this. I care about it being delivered to my door. You really like put it, I mean, in this um, way that sounds very medicinal, which is kind of funny that people say laughter is the best medicine. But you literally, the way you say, like, just give me my laugh. It's like, just give me my hit. I just did a hit. Like, I don't care if this is, like, the real shit or it's illegal. I'm going to get it. And you're like, damn. Yeah, and you think that, like, <laughs> the last year of, like, uh, labor being dissected the way that it is would make people kind of reevaluate that and, like, you know, make a point of when they see something funny, try to find out who the original source was. Yeah. But it hasn't, it hasn't really changed. <laughs> what if there was a way to just like sign up to receive a funny text from a comedian a day and we all just get paid like $5? Like that, I mean, I'm not in Silicon Valley, but I'm like, that would be a faster way to like get your hit and pay people. Like while we're trying to get staff, you know, we're still going to try to do those classic things, but why wait? Because there is this element, like, I spend a lot of time working on packets and things that will never see the light of day. But it does make me not want to just, like, give out jokes either, which you're told you're not supposed to. But then you can't really build that audience. And Fuck Jerry can just steal a bunch of jokes and build an audience. And it is, like, this weird um, sort of damned if you do, damned if you don't situation. Yeah. And they've found a way to, like, capitalize on our jokes in a way that we never could. And it's just bullshit. <laughs> Damn. Uh, like today, today's a fucking perfect example. That guy, fucking Rex Chapman, who was a basketball player, and fucking all he does is just steal content for Twitter, and uh. now CNN's giving him a fucking show. And it's just like, all right, so none of this fucking matters. This guy who fucking five year, or I think five ten years ago, robbed an Apple store so he could pay for his fucking oxycotton, <laughs> and now he is a, has a show on CNN because why not? Why not, you know, why not? Yeah, sure. Give it to fucking Rex Chapman. Okay, but then I would like, I'm going to be a devil's advocate here and say, if that's your opinion about those kinds of shows, which is totally valid, why wouldn't you be watching more actual comedy specials to support the comedians? <laughs> because I'm not, in, I'm not in the game. Like, sure. I'm not, or, okay. I'm not you know I'm not they're not making it to make mike malloy watch it you're right <laughs> it's, it's a, i i'm not gonna pay to go see anybody so why hmm. it, why would they what was the last special you watched oh cripes uh i better make sure i answer right because somebody i mean not right i guess i'm trying to get a sense of how long like yeah, you I'm truly not, haven't been watching a friend of mine <laughs> <Some> <laughs> <friend> of <laughs> special i said i definitely watched i might not have um the last stand-up watched <laughs> on tv was um blair saki on Corden. gotcha and that yeah and then that's a late night set right those are easier to and that's the funny thing is like you immediately thought of friends so i can already kind of understand where you're coming from because i yeah i have a hard time too just enjoying um without the just the thoughts of my career but i sometimes will try to like compartmentalize but it it is different. I do have a different feeling when I'm like, oh, so-and-so just did a set. I should watch it. Like, that. that's a different feeling than, like, let me sit down and watch this f special that, of a comic I admire. And I don't know how long it's... Yeah, I'm trying to think the last time... 
maybe Ronnie Chang was the last time. Like he, I don't know him personally, but I already like was aware of him, and he was. That was the last time I like sat down and watched a special I wanted to check out, and I wasn't like had no investment in it. I guess, but yeah, that that was that still was a while ago. Just am worried about like. I guess I'm just wor like I don't want to be influenced. Mm, okay stage and i think Interesting. the only thing i can do to be better is just like be more comfortable and be more of myself and like oh. dig into myself more and i think that searching for like going and looking at things outside of me is only gonna make things worse do you play music no because i'm okay then i guess this wouldn't play but because i feel like it's like musicians no, I totally understand. I don't. I I had a rule like, especially in the first couple of years. Now I don't really like think in terms of these rules anymore because it's a little easier to know when I want to write and when I don't. But I used to say like have a rule that was like don't write after watching stand up or comedy, um, because no matter what, like sometimes you get inspired and something starts something else that might have been original. But I just know that for a fact, like you're still gonna be in the cadence of the other person, and um, I get that. But uh, that's. Well, how do you feel? Do you are you like someone who's weird about notes? Like, do you do you do writing groups with friends? No, I never really. Uh, I've never really done a whole lot of that. I was really bad about actually sitting down and writing for a very long time, and I was, you know, just a digital. I do it on my notes app on the phone, and now I, you know, before the uh, before the pandemic, I never like wrote shit down, and now I got into the habit of having a notebook and writing shit down, and like you know, tacking on notes to each thing, having a page for each joke that I can just, you know, if I do something different on stage, I can run off and just go, hey, fucking add this, add this. Um, <clears throat> it sounds that. like there's a lot of anxiety around the actual, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. I, I mean, and I don't mean this in a judge, because judge, I, I'm so curious, like the different way we approach um, performing, but the I, I think this is the first time I've heard like, this adamantly like i don't like watching stand up versus just like i don't have time or it doesn't do anything for me like there's such a divide between how much you enjoy performing and how how much it it's almost like it's like a same part of your brain but the opposite almost like it's like it's the it's bringing out the anxiety of performing and all of what that means in watching it i mean it's I think that during the during the pandemic, obviously, I learned how to like bartend a little. And now that I go out and and I'll pay, I'll buy a fucking sixteen dollar drink somewhere, and it'll get made for me. And I'll look at it and just be like, I could have. Uh, I was like, Are you like I can't watch any bar? I go to the bar. You're like, I can't fucking look at a bartender making a drink. There, yeah, there's some of that where I'm just like, Hey, bud, that's uh, that's not how you do that. And Damn. It's it's tough for me to, especially like to, you know, in, in a, a version where you're a consumer and you're putting up money uh -huh. for something and you know how to do it enough to where it would be done right if you did it. When you pay for something and it's done wrong, you're kind of just like, well, well, fuck. But do, do you ever want to just be able to, because I, I know that perfection feeling of like oh i could do it better but like sometimes doing it like cooking for yourself is not the same as sitting down and not having to do anything or lift a finger and then having a meal cooked for you yeah and i, I think a part of it is also just that i don't want stand up to be the only thing i have to talk about both off stage and on hmm. um, there was a lot of that when i first started where i see I have conversations with people and the only thing they fucking talk about is stand up and i'm just like what fucking do outside of this this, huh. this shit isn't for fucking ever and it's not gonna fucking it's not a warm blanket you can wrap yourself in it's a fucking thing that if you're lucky you'll find a way to or if you're lucky and you're talented and you work hard enough you'll find a way to make work but other than that like you, you better have something fucking outside of this well that's a very dark way to look because i do know what you mean about the politics and uh, socializing and parties that are end up being so like navel gazing but i I would like to offer a perspective that like some some people genuinely like watching stand up and that's what that got them in to different degrees. But I, I don't know if it's all coming from this place of like I have to immerse myself in it or I'll, I understand what that feeling is. I've I've had that too. Where it's like, oh if I'm not learning enough, then I'm not um, you know, gonna be a good stand up, whereas like really you should just be working on your stand up. But to some degree I also 
like that's what got me into it. Like, I like it. <laughs> yeah. but, um, I mean, it's, I think it's similar. You know, I had the same issues with, you know, when I was working a day job where if we went out for drinks after work and they were talking about work, I'd be like, would you guys <laughs> shut the fuck up and talk about anything else? So what do you like to do I for fun? Like to go back to work. Uh, fucking, I like watching sports. Okay. I like, uh, that's pretty much fucking it. But no sports that you've played, only ones that you know that you have no shot at playing pro. No, no. I mean, I, I like watching professional sports. I just don't like, you know, like I said, like going in and watching a level that I could compete at was hard for me. Yeah. Okay. You know, I still like when I played football in high school, I still watched college football and pro football. Like it wasn't like I was like, I should be out there playing for the Patriots. I was just like, I fucking go, mm-hmm. go team, you know? Yeah, and sports, especially like NFL, like major leagues, everything like has um, a different, like the the dynamic is a little different than like high school and college where you're an athlete watching. Like there's a there's the fandom, like that's a part of the culture, like rooting for your team, find the merch, like whether or not um, the team year to year is good. Like there's a different dynamic in supporting your team that I do. Un- yeah. Like, I understand that brings people together the way like old school church brings people together. Tri- tribalism. Yeah. But, or, you know, if, if you want to look at it in a different, a more positive light, it's like a community. Yeah, there's community. Well, so some people say that co- comedy, like they call it the, like a tribe, but I'm curious, like, do you as a person, like, do you get annoyed if someone like identifies you as a comic, like, you know, outside of comedy? Are you like someone who like doesn't like to introduce yourself that way or doesn't want people to know? Oh, no. I mean, obviously, I work fairly hard at this to be considered that. <laughs> well, I mean, like, there's a difference between like you're showing up to a show and like you're on 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 the set or on stage and you're the performer but like if you're in a you know let's say you go with your um fiance to like a social event and it's not comedians like do you feel like that's something where you're like oh i want to have this different identity off stage i mean it's it's what i do if somebody asks about it i'll talk about it but i also like when i'm out having a good time i don't want to talk about work (laughs) <laughs> I work at a fucking tech company or if I were I do stand up comedy if you want to fucking ask me shit about it I'm not gonna like be weird and closed off about it but it's not like something I'm fucking dying to talk to everybody about damn I never knew I mean this is so interesting and this is why I like doing this pod because I feel like we've talked in depth about so many things but um, this is definitely something I a different side of you that I think is really interesting because it's like you know I, I don't think I go around asking people in comedy if they like stand up because I don't know it's like a like it's not like I know out of this context it's like not that I wouldn't care but it's like why would I ask you that but um it is so interesting because I've never heard that perspective um I think maybe it's it's more similar like I know I have a lot of friends that like golf but they wouldn't watch golf on tv okay hmm and I think but golf is I, slow stand up shouldn't so be stand up <laughs> I mean in you know in a way but it's like okay know. yeah it doesn't make you laugh out loud, I'm assuming. A lot of these specials you're, like, watching just to, like, from an analytical brain. I Yeah, I'm too – I'm watching in, in too critical a way. And, like, I think the pandemic softened me up in that sense because there was a mm. lot of times where, like, I'd be watching a show, a sitcom or whatever, and my fiancé is like, you're actually laughing at shit, man. <laughs> like, yeah, I fucking – my brain's soft. Uh, do you watch your own sets? Um, or do you feel weird about it? No, I mean, I, I listen back to shit, uh, and try to figure out if there's stuff that I like, oh, here's the thing that I said that I normally don't. So fucking circle that, add it to there. Um, I used to be more, I used to treat it like sports and like I'd film Hmm. every set and then I'd break down everything. And I got away from that just because I found out that like, not many of the comics that I like hung out with or like looked up to were doing that sort of shit. And I figured I was just kind of being a little too in my head. Um, but I, it could have its ups. I mean, I think when you're working on a specific trying to crack that yeah. thing, but I, I know what you mean. Cause I, I'm a, I'm not necessarily an athlete, but I was a dancer and, and there's that element of perfectionism where you're like, Oh, if I like move this way or how come I got a better laugh in this room. But then it's yeah. like, sometimes that live element does just affect how it goes 
Yeah, and then there's definitely times where I'm like, oh, take this thing that fucking crushed that one time you did it and add it to there, and then it never hits the same way that it, it did that one time. That's um, – okay, I have a question uh, in terms of, like, your um... – like not your comedy relationships i mean obviously you mentioned your fiance but like maybe like friends or whatever outside of you know college friends do if do your friends like if they don't come support you or do you like wish that they wouldn't come watch you or if they like i guess i'm like do you have friends that are fans um or is it like kind of thing where you're like that's my work and i don't really like need your approval or want you at my work no, no, I definitely, um, you know, if I'm in town and doing shows, I always tell people either come to the show or come hang out after whatever you're up for. Um, it's definitely funny. Like my friends from high school saw me do stand up the first time I ever did stand up. Uh -huh. And, you know, I, I was decent from the, I was decent. I was decent enough that first time where they like, kept coming back mm -hmm. but now like you know a couple of years a couple of years later i was back in boston doing a show in a theater opening for somebody else and he's just like one of my buddies was just like you're like i get so nervous when you're up there for some oh that's like, so cute know. it's it's <laughs> yeah it's funny and i'm just like you know i'm good at this now right like you know i'll, I'll be fine and i'll figure it out. like he's just like yeah i forget that sometimes because he saw you blossom. That's so interesting because it's like, yeah, I, I remember doing my first improv show where I invited like 11 people and I was like yeah. probably the worst that I've ever done. But it, like it went well in the sense that like yeah. it went in the room, it, you know, all the people were there to support their friends. It was nobody was a professional, but like people were funny enough to be doing it. Um, but then like it's funny that you'll fast forward years later when you actually do start getting paid to do things and it's so impossible to get friends to come out. And they're like, no, yeah, we, we get that you're good. We just don't, when you don't need our support anymore. And you're like, but now I want you to remember that I actually got good. <laughs> well, it's, I definitely did the thing with the first year where I was just like, I was inviting people to shit that I was doing. And I wish I hadn't. I <laughs> thank that for later. But that's sometimes, I think people, I think people do get joy out of watching that. I know it seems so silly because like the the perfectionist in us is probably like, oh, I can't believe you saw that. So you got to come back and watch it better. But I think they see you because that's before you saw yourself as a comic. They saw you as like my friends doing stand up, which in some ways they saw you as a comic before you did. And maybe that's why they're so nervous for you because they're like, oh, I was a part of this journey. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Um, what do you like to, like, you just literally just watch sports or do you, like, have, like, stuff you do, like, not, I don't want to say in the real world, but uh, I guess I do mean in the real, like, off the media way, like, do you, yeah. what do you do when you're, like, because you said, it seems like you like to get out your head out of work sometimes, like, do you have, like, completely random hobbies that you're, like, this is my, I knit? I, I play video games, I watch TV and sports, I smoke weed, and I, <laughs> I get my drink on. Okay, so all fun things. Okay, so that's good. I mean, it's, I'm just so curious because I'm like, I wonder it's, from what it sounds like you like have such specific view of like where things in your life should be or like how to spend your time, you know? So I was like, I wonder if there's any like surprise, like hidden, hidden hobbies of Mike that I don't know about. Not really. I watch a lot of pro wrestling. That's about it. Okay, well, rest that's interesting because wrestling is so fake. Yeah, but you have such a part of... Well, it's a performance, but in the yeah. sense that, like, it's both a bit of athleticism and a bit of comedy, but uh, mm. but it has that element of, like, maybe it's safe because it's all scripted, but there's that, there's that moment of conflict and competition and uncertainty, but you're not as yeah. scared that it's not going to – you can't really bomb if someone planned to lose. I mean, you can, you can have shit go bad. I mean, it's different than like, <laughs> uh, you know, like uh, ice dancing sometimes is what I compare it to, like p p paired figure skating. Like it's, yeah, it's choreographed, but you could also like drop that person in something catastrophic. Hmm. Like these guys aren't opponents, they're teammates in this sense that it's a, uh, a routine that they need to both get through safely. Do you f get, okay. Do you feel um, this way about watching like groups perform like SNL or like, you know, sketches? No, I've never really liked uh, improv very much or uh, sketch. 
that much. I have a, like I think it's if when it's done really well, it's great. When it's done anything short of really well, it's really bad. What about like SNL or like Portlandia? Like with any of these shows, do you have that feeling too? Where you're like, ugh. I just it's not for me. You just don't care. Okay. Yeah, I I, I used, guess like, I yeah. Love SNL like when I was a kid because it was what I had access to and it was what mm-hmm. I was familiar with like I was but I was more into the like the weekend update aspect of it than the actual mm. sketches so interesting because I, when you said the thing about ice dancing it made me think like oh I wonder if there's an element of like um almost like how your friends got embarrassed or not embarrassed but nervous for you on stage if when you're watching these specials or sports like what you're seeing it as the athlete or the comedian and they're all alone kind of like the versus like wrestling even though it's something can go wrong you're like all everyone is in on it everyone's part of the team so that's kind of why i was curious but it doesn't seem like but but, well maybe you're just a tough tough nut to crack and maybe i will never dissect why you don't like stand up but um god help me i've been trying no (laughs) yeah yeah Okay, that's fair. Yeah, I don't go out of my way to watch a lot of stand up. Sometimes I do it mostly because I want to. I get a. I do feel like I fall into a hole where I'm so in it that I lost sight of what I liked about it. And so there is a bit of like me trying to keep myself fresh. But um, but yeah, there's two different sides of me. Like the the work side is not. It, yeah, I'm not just sitting down. Like I can never just go, buy a ticket to a comedy club and sit down and have a laugh and drink with my friends without thinking that I'm like in a place of work. <laughs> yeah, it's it's pretty fair. Yeah. But specials I don't feel that way. So that's the first time I've heard that. But that's you know that's a that's a that's a very unique confession and I like that. Um um well, I do have a fun game I want to play. This one I'm so curious um <laughs> cuz I've learned so much about you yet also feel like I have more questions about you. <laughs> After doing this podcast, yeah, we usually leave with more. <laughs> that I'm like, I hope that this game goes well. I hope you like it because now I'm like, I, I don't know why my trigger tends to be like when um, when I'm like trying to connect and and this isn't on you. This is like really good for me to know. But when I'm like, oh, is it this? And I'll be honest, most of the time people are like, yeah. How did you know? And like, this is so good for me because it's so uncomfortable to just be like throwing questions at you and you being like so chill. Like you're not like mad, but you're like, no, eh, no. And I'm literally like floundering like a fish. I'm like, what? Help, connect. <laughs> well, it's, most of the shit is shit that I've thought about in, in fucking great detail. Um, uh-huh. <laughs> so it's, it's like, I, I've definitely looked at, at into the, the reasons and I'm just like, yeah, I think it's just uh, apathy in most cases. Well, but so like just to give you context too, like like um, there's I've gotten confessions in this vein, and and that's why I think it's so interesting. But in different, on the opposite extreme, like Caleb Sinan had his confession was he likes to like overly invest in watching everything of somebody. Like when he like meets a new friend, he like watch all the YouTube videos, everything, and that I'm like, damn, that's a different side of also maybe being obsessive of your career too, because it's like beyond just watching it for fun. But there's an element of like this person you know so i i do think there's so much there's definitely something there that i i'm not getting at and i don't understand either but um that's kind of why i was pushing but i yeah i don't even watch watch clips that i got sent for faded like oh yeah i never will if i see you out in the wild uh Uh uh-huh and you're good i'll fucking make a note of it if somebody that i know is good vouches for you i'll make Mm. a note of it but i'm not watching clips i'm not i'm not i'm just not doing it i don't want to do it i'm not going to do it i know how i like yeah a good idea of who's out there and who's making noise uh and that's fair i don't really watch tapes either only the only times i have is when i'm like wow we haven't had like like i'm like it's all these like you know straight white guys submitting to a show so i'm gonna like try to get see some new people kind of thing and then that's when i'll like ask for taste but usually even those it's like yeah we usually have a good sense of who's out there and it tends to be the it's not that there aren't good women it's that they're all getting fucking books or whatever so that's why (laughs) the 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 newbies are submitting tapes um 
But that's funny. I never realized that. I skip through on TikTok. I follow friends um, and I don't ever watch their sets. But like, I don't, like, I know it's not for me. They're trying to build a fan base. Like, they don't need me to watch their TikToks. Exactly. Like most people, I'm just like, I, I will smash the follow button because you're my friend and I want you to have the fucking metrics that, that mm-hmm. you have. And Yeah, I'll type a haha without saying it I'll, I'll fucking i'm not looking at it. i'm not reading i'm not watching it but i'll fucking smash that like button and on to the next like i want you to get pushed up the algorithm you're my pal i hope this gets to its right destination but it ain't me <laughs> i think that's actually a very healthy way to approach it and i'm realizing that i probably put too much pressure on certain like my boyfriend for example is not a comedian but now that we know each other better like I don't think he needs to be watching everything I do to try to get to know me. But there's a part of me that misses when we first started dating, when he was like watching my, you know, trying to like go, stalk my social media and be like, oh, you're really funny. Because that's the that's the, the work part of my brain who needs validation. But the human part that just wants to connect, it's like, let's connect by talking. So it's maybe healthy that you're not trying to do that. And I'm like, hmm. Where am I? What is the fan part of you? Would you have liked me if you, <laughs> you didn't like? Like, would, would you be a fan? And it's like, that's probably not a good question to ask. Uh, <laughs> um, well, uh, I'm glad you... Thank you for putting up with my spiraling. By the way, do you, do you feel it or is it just me? Because I want to call out how uncomfortable I am with not being able to, like, read you. And I like that you're putting me in this situation, but this is, like me spiraling because normally people are like oh my god how did you know and i think this is good for me and uh it's funny to watch me spiral (laughs) it's always weird when people are uh, like classify me as like a tough nut to crack where i'm just like what i say everything that i'm thinking what are you talking like yeah how is it that hard i think that's what it is is that you are also like it doesn't feel um inauthentic like it feels genuine and you are being and i can sense that and that's the part of me that's going oh no it wasn't like if you were being like i don't want to answer and you're being rude then it's easy for me to be like oh, okay well like i will give him space but i know he doesn't want to say but the, because that's not the case there's almost this like oh he is just saying everything. Oh shit, I'm the weird one. And like, that's really sending me. And because we're friends, I, I can admit that. And uh, I think that for the audience who's used to hearing me in a different way, this will be interesting. Um, well, do you want to play a quick game? Yeah, yeah. Let's okay. So this is based uh, just name wise because you host a show called Faded and it's at Faded Comedy LA for anyone who wants to follow it. They do Twitch live streams and it's um, really funny when it's back live. You should go watch it live. Uh, but this is called Faded, Blaze, or Stone Cold Sober. So basically like a variation of Fuck, Mary Kill, except I will just list three things that you basically if you had to do each of these three things, but you could only choose one state to be in for each which would you choose? Um, does that make sense? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I got it. Cool. Okay. And these are all hypothetical, so you don't have to think too hard about, like, if there's, like, this first one has breakup, but you don't have to think specifically about a person. Okay. Would you, uh, okay, faded, blazed, or stone cold sober, confess your romantic feelings to someone, break up with someone, or ask your ex to get back together? Oh, God. Um... Oh, I'm a I'm an engaged man, so I I don't know. If that's right, that's why I preface that with more like think hypothetically in terms of like yeah, uh, your past see. you. Break up, sober, uh, ex drunk, and <laughs> what's the other one? Um, confess your feelings, blazed. I guess you'd be high. That probably makes that probably makes sense. That's a good yeah. That feels right. You yeah. I think that's right. You asking <laughs> ex, you should definitely not be sober for that. Um, okay. Brunch with your parents, job interview, JFL audition. So JFL, for those who are listening who don't know, is just like a big showcase in stand-up comedy. Probably sober for that, um, <laughs> for a job interview and drunk for brunch. Okay. That feels fair. Um, okay. This one, <laughs> for the athlete in you. Okay. Play golf with Tiger Woods, basketball with LeBron James, or tennis with Venus Williams. Hmm. Um, probably sober for the basketball because I don't want to throw up, uh, (laughs) drunk for golf and high for tennis. Okay. Yeah. That feels right. Part of me is like, cause I'm so bad at basketball. I'm like, that would be fun high, but I would for sure get wrecked. Um, and I cannot do golf sober. That would be 
a travesty. Okay, two more. Um, moving day, New Year's Eve, or graduation day? Ooh, um, moving day sober, high for graduation, drunk for New Year's. Okay. Um, damn, moving day sober. That means you're like really going to get shit done. That's good. I've, yeah, I feel like I've always... After I'm done, I don't want to... <laughs> I try to like make it so tough for myself when I move. I'll be like, I'll put it off to the last second and then I'm like, I'm just going to take an edible and pack. And it's like, why? But I've pretty much done that every time I've moved. Okay, here's the final one. Okay. Host a sold out show, host or guest on a podcast or do a late night set. Uh, <laughs> probably sober for the late night set. <laughs> uh, do you want to have a little champagne to celebrate? <laughs> Yeah, I can have it after. They tape it fucking three in the afternoon. Yeah, that's probably, true. I could probably hold up. Uh, sober for that, drunk for the sold out show, and then high for the podcast. Okay. I feel like you, like you, these seem so hard to me, but when you say it like that, I'm like, damn, you really do have your head, like your head is in the game because I'm like, that it does feel like the right answer, even though there's no right answer. Um, thank you so much for doing this show, Mike, and for getting honest about your hate. No, I'm just kidding. Your hate for yeah, stand-up hate. specials, um, and giving me, uh, giving me a challenge. Uh, you know, this has been really fun. Um, and it's been fun to get to know you better. Tell the listeners where they can follow you and find you and, uh, check out your upcoming projects. Hell yeah. Um, so I am on Instagram. I'm fake Mike Malloy on uh, Twitter, I'm back to handsome adult. They gave me my account after fucking five months of suspension. Uh, what else? MikeMalloy.com. I've got tour dates up. I'm going to be on the road a fair amount, fucking hopefully. Uh, I'm in Portland next week, Boston the week after, and uh, a bunch of other places. Hopefully I can announce more soon. Hopefully I can, uh, by the time this drops, I've announced that I, uh, I'm i doing the uh, taping and that I've got uh, an album recording. Yeah. Yes. Heck yes. Follow Mike. Watch all that stuff when he announces it. Um, you can follow this podcast at Tell Me Anything Pod on Instagram and follow me at Larissa T on Twitter and at Teresa Lee Bot on Instagram. Thank you. Thank you for listening to You Can Tell Me Anything. You Can Tell Me Anything is a comedic podcast created and produced by Teresa Lee on the Hoo Ha Ha Podcast Network. The Hoo Ha Ha team is Ashley McAtee, Audrey Povar, Maggie Week Austin, Cardi Assad, and Stephanie Binot. The theme song for this podcast was created by Cody Johnston. The outro music was written by Shipwreck Sailor. And the Hoo Ha Ha app can be found in the Apple Store to stream your favorite comedy series and laugh out loud podcasts by the funniest woman in comedy. To contact this podcast specifically, you can email tellmeanythingpod at gmail.com and follow us on Instagram at tellmeanythingpod. Thank you.